evening and greetings to you all in media land. It's indeed a great privilege to be back with you, sharing with you the word of God. And I trust that you have been blessed by the word. And I have no doubt that you will be blessed by this word. So welcome again to Light for Your Journey Bible Study. I trust that you have been receiving light for your journey. I want to read for you one verse of scripture, which is our base verse, and then we're going to be making reference to some other verses because of the topic that we are continuing with. So it is Ephesians 5 and verse 18. It says, Ephesians 5 and verse 18, and be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. The word of the Lord, thanks be to God. Let us pray. Almighty God and our Father, we come to you, we give you thanks for this great privilege. Thank you, God, that you have brought us here into this study one more time. I pray then, God Almighty, that you will bless your word to our hearts. May your Holy Spirit continue to shine light on your word, and our hearts will be enlightened. Our eyes will be opened up to your word. Bless your word to our hearts now. In Jesus' name, amen. So we have been looking at the Spirit, the Holy Spirit. In fact, we started with the third person. We started with the Trinity. Then we are at the third person of the Trinity, which is the Holy Spirit, where we looked last week at the baptism of the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit. This lesson we will look at, be filled with the Spirit or being filled with the Spirit, what it is to be filled with the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit. Well, in fact, the text that we read here tells us that we must not be drunk in that we should not become intoxicated. We should not become under the influence of wine, whereby it is the wine that is having control of our operation, but rather be filled with the Spirit. In other words, become intoxicated with the Spirit. And what Spirit that is? The Holy Spirit the Holy Ghost, be, be under the influence of the Holy Spirit. So the topic then is being filled with the Spirit. I trust that many of you by now you would come to understand the term the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And so we understand the term the baptism of the Holy Spirit to mean that it is a once for all experience. And I want to emphasize here once because 
It is an experience that one undergoes once, right? It is an experience that happens once. A once-in-a-lifetime experience where the believer is empowered by the Holy Spirit. So, this once for all experience, the believer become empowered by that. <coughs> I'm sorry. The believer becomes empowered by the Holy Spirit. And even though it is a once for all experience. It is an experience that lasts, that endures in the life of the believer. So when the believer becomes baptized with the Holy Spirit, experiences the baptism of the Holy Spirit, that believer receives the ability which is power to perform the supernatural work of God like miracles, working, performing miracles, healing, prophesying, anything that speaks to the supernatural work of God. This is what the baptism of the Holy Spirit enables one to perform. Also, my friends, my brothers and my sisters, many of us are familiar with the term being filled with the Holy Spirit. So you have the baptism of the Holy Spirit and you have also being filled with the Holy Spirit. So the question one asks, is there a difference between these two? And if there is a difference between these two, what are the differences? Now, the interpretation of being filled with the Spirit is having to do with one coming under the control or the influence of the Holy Spirit. So it is us coming under the influence. It is us coming totally under the control of the Holy Spirit. Coming under the control of the Holy Spirit. As the word tells us in Ephesians 5 verse 18, 18, be filled with the Spirit. And the, the, the word being filled with the Spirit, filled comes from the Greek word plero, which means to have influence or control of. So that's the, that's the understanding, that's the definition of plero, being filled, is to have influence or to have control of. So this is what happens. As the Holy Spirit in operation in our lives, or as one becomes filled with the Holy Spirit, it is not he or she is in control, it is the Holy Spirit has full control. It is not the program or the schedule that is in control, it is the Holy Spirit. It is not the ritual or the custom or the tradition or the personality it is not your denomination or your church is in control when one is filled with the holy spirit but it is the holy spirit is in control isn't that the kind of experience that the church needs today when it is not anything else is in control it is the Holy Spirit is in control. 
The truth is, my brothers and sisters, what we have in too many of our churches are programs that are in control, right? Our principles and personalities and traditions that are in control. It is not the Holy Spirit who is in control. But when and where the Holy Spirit is in control, then we understand that the influence is going to be a divine influence. The operation is going to be a divine operation. So that is it. So I want to further say then that when Paul writes in Ephesians 5.18 saying, be filled with the Spirit, he writes this in the continuous tense. That is, be continue to be filled with the Spirit. So what that means is that there are many filling experiences or opportunities. While the baptism of the Holy Spirit is a once for all experience, it is a one, it is an experience that happens once in the life of a believer. The filling now of the Holy Spirit carries different experience and opportunities. So there are different times when one will be filled with the Holy Spirit. So there are many fillings. There are many fillings of the Holy Spirit. So the difference then with the baptism of the Holy Spirit from the from being filled with the Holy Spirit the baptism of the Holy Spirit happens once and lasts as long as so as long as you remain a child of God in fellowship with God and you were baptized with or in the Holy Spirit that experience remains The filling of the Holy Spirit now, as I say, it is a continuous experience. Um, it, are, it is like as the occasion requires. It is as the occasion requires. So you are filled with the Holy Spirit as the occasion requires. And you're going to be seeing that into, uh, you know, later on as we go into some biblical references. As we look into some biblical references. So yes, there is a difference between both. So what I want us to do then, to look at some instances where Christians were filled with the Holy Spirit and the manifestations as evidences so you can be filled with the holy spirit but apart from being filled with the holy spirit they are going to accompany some manifestations and these manifestations will serve as evidence or evidences to your experience as filled with the Holy Spirit. So the first text we're going to look at is Acts chapter 2 and verse 4. And this is the first um, New Testament occurrence. So the first New Testament record of being filled with the Holy Spirit. And of course, we're going to see the, the evidence there. Acts chapter 2 and verse 4. It says... And they were filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. So, you know, this speaks to at the day of Pentecost as the disciples 
who were gathered together and you know they were in one accord according to the word the bible says there suddenly there um, came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and then further down now it says they were filled so the force of God came down from heaven upon the disciples as they gathered, as they assembled their, themselves, waiting for the promise of the Father. The Bible here tells us they were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues. So the evidence now that provides that is provided here is that they spoke with other tongues so what was the manifest evidence right here speaking in tongues they spoke with other tongues so firstly here as we see the saints the believers they were filled with the holy spirit and then they spoke with other tongues as the spirit gave them utterance let us look at Acts chapter 4 and verse 31 also. Acts chapter 4, verse 31. Acts chapter 4 and verse 31. Yes, hear what it says. And they prayed, and when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together and they were filled with the Holy Ghost and they spake the word of God with boldness. Now, this is speaking to the heat of the persecution that the apostles were undergoing. In fact, this, was, this is recorded as the first persecution where the council, the Sanhedrin, they all took them and they strictly warn them, they punish them, they flog them. And they, after they release them, they charge them to say that they should not preach in the name of Jesus. It was Peter who said to them, um, said to them whether it be right in the sight of God to hearken unto you more than God. In other words, Peter was saying that I rather obey God rather than men and as they came together as a fellowship they would have shared their experience and that they prayed and the bible says and when they prayed the place was shaken where they assembled look at that brethren isn't that powerful isn't that an experience that the church desire where the saints of God prayed and where they were, the building shook. It was like an earthquake. But not only that, the building shook like an earthquake. But it says also that they were filled with the Holy Ghost. Now look at the, look at the manifest evidence there as they were filled with the Holy Ghost. What was the evidence that accompanied being filled with the Holy Ghost? It says they spake the word of God with boldness. And this was what, this was what they needed because it was not earlier, it wasn't very far from this experience. They were charged strictly not to preach the name of Jesus. But the Holy Spirit, as they were filled with the Holy Spirit, they received boldness to speak the word of God. I believe that there are those of us, we need that experience of being filled with the Holy Spirit of God so that we can speak the word of God oh, with boldness. Many of us, we speak the word of God, but we speak it with fear. We speak the word of God, but we speak with compromise. We speak the word of God like we are speaking with water in our mouth. But here were the disciples 
as they were filled with the Holy Spirit, they spoke the word of God with boldness. So, another evidence of, of, of being filled with the Holy Spirit, being filled with the Holy Ghost, is speaking the word of God with boldness. So, while they were going to be persecuted again, they were not afraid. They were aware of the persecution. They were aware that they could be killed. But the Holy Spirit enabled them to speak God's word with boldness. Look also at Acts chapter 7. Verse 55 and verse 56. Acts chapter 7, verse 55 and verse 56. What it says. Read. And he being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God. And Jesus standing on the right hand of God and said, Behold, I see heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. Beautiful again. And of course, the background of this speaks to Stephen. As he encountered this deadly persecution. When they met up with him. And charged him. Brought him to the high priest. He was not afraid to make his defense. And I want us to see the angle from which he made his defense as he defended what he was influenced to do. He, 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 he made the defense from the Old Testament point of view where he made mention of um, Abraham. He made mention of, you know, the promise and the covenants um, of um, to Abraham, he made mention of Joseph as he was in Egypt. He made mention of the bondage and all of those things. He made mention of Moses. He made mention of, you know, Jacob, the children of Israel, because these would have been very much familiar with the Old Testament patriarchs. And he was making the connection to say that these patriarchs who served God, it is the same God we are serving. It is a God who manifests himself in Jesus Christ. And he spoke to them and, you know, said they rebelled. They rejected this God. The Bible said as they listened, they were stirred up with anger and, and, they, and they snatched their teeth. Yes, in verse 50, in verse 54, it says, When they heard these things, they were cut to the heart and they snatched with him with their teeth. And verse 55 now says, And being full of the Holy Ghost. He looked up steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. What are we seeing here as Stephen had the experience of being filled with the Holy Ghost there? We are seeing the manifest the manifestation and the evidence and the evidence is that he had Revelation of the glory of God. So, being filled with the Holy Spirit, 
always accompany with manifest evidence because what we saw in Acts chapter 2 verse 4 we saw the manifest evidence to be speaking in tongues we saw in Acts 4 verse 31 as the manifest evidence to be um, speaking the word with boldness and now we're seeing the manifest evidence as he had the revelation of the glory of God and Christ So when one being filled with the Holy Spirit of God, it is not just one set of evidence. As many would feel and, and many, many hold on to the doctrine or the understanding that the only evidence of being filled with the Holy Spirit is speaking in tongues. But this is not what the Bible explains. This is, this is not the Bible's um, version of it. We see, and which is, what report should we believe? Should we really believe the report of individuals? Should we really believe the report of opinions? Or we should believe the report of the scripture? And so from the scripture, it is saying to us that the evidence of being filled with the spirit is not speaking in tongues alone it carries as a manifestation so i believe that there may be those of you you will come up with the experience of being filled with the holy spirit and all that you do is just to giving praise in an extraordinary way you could be filled with the holy spirit at a particular time and all that you do is just expression of worship to God what that is saying being filled with the Holy Spirit is accompanied with extraordinary operations extraordinary manifestation you are not being filled with Holy Spirit and your operation is in the normal or in the in in the usual you operate in an extraordinary manner look at look also at acts chapter 11 and verse 24 it's here what it says for he was a good man full of the Holy Ghost and of faith and much people was added to the church yes so here the Bible was reporting of another servant of God to saying that this servant of God he was what a good man and not just being good, but it reports that he was full of the Holy Spirit. He was full of the Holy Ghost. So my brothers and sisters, this is an experience that each and every one of us need. So we see um, Cornelius here. A good man, but being full of the Holy Spirit. And while it does not outline an evidence of Cornelius being full of the Holy Spirit, but we would read of Cornelius evident of deeds because the Bible speaks that he gave alms to the church. And he, I believe that he being full of the Holy Spirit would have enabled, enabled him to give arms to the church, to express kindness and hospitality to the church in an extraordinary way. Very extraordinary. Because he was full of the Holy Ghost. Look, at, look, look also at Acts chapter 13 and verse 52. Acts chapter 13 
and verse 52 here. Hear what it says. And the disciples were filled with joy and the Holy Ghost. The disciples being filled with joy. And I believe that one of the, one of the accompaniment of being full of the Holy Spirit is joyfulness. Being joyful. Being joyful. Again, you are not seeing that being full of the Holy Spirit, being filled with the Holy Spirit, is always accompanied with speaking in tongues. You do not see that. As a matter of fact, it, it, it is very few. It is not much in the, in the book of Acts where we see being filled with the Holy Spirit is accompanied with speaking in tongues. It is accompanied with other manifestations that is of God. So it is God who allows for the different manifestations. He allow us to be filled with the Holy Spirit and he determines the manifestation that will be accompanied by the Holy Spirit. Look at Acts chapter 13 verse 9 and 11 as well. Then Saul who also is called Paul, be filled with the Holy Spirit, set his eyes on him and said, O oh, full of subtlety and all mischief, thou art a child of the devil, thou enemy of all righteousness, wilt thou not cease to pervert the right way of the Lord? And now behold, the hand of the Lord is upon you. And thou shalt be blind, not seeing for a season. And immediately there fell on him a midst of darkness. And he went about seeking someone to lead him. Who was this? Who was this? This was a man who went about provoking the church. Yes. This was a man, a sorcerer, a man who went about provoking the Christians. And now he saw Paul and he was playing the same game. He was engaging with his own provocations. And as he engaged in this provocation, Saul, the Holy Spirit came upon him in this, in this manner. And the Bible said, he being filled with the Holy Spirit. What happened? He set his eyes on him and began to spoke begin to speak. Now this was another evidence of being filled with the Holy Spirit and a very powerful evidence because it says he being filled with the Holy Ghost first thing he did he looked at him very intently right and then the, the Holy Spirit now enabled him to speak and the word with, that he spoke was word of discernment because he was discerning what kind of man this was. So an evidence of he being filled with the Holy Spirit in this context was that he was able to discern what kind of man was he. So he said, you're full of subtlety and mischief. You are a child of the devil. You are the enemy of all righteousness will you not stop perverting the right ways of the lord of course we need the same 
fullness of God's Holy Spirit to be able to discern, to be able to speak the wisdom of God, to be able to pronounce upon some situations, to pronounce upon some personality some people who are provoking the church and provoking individuals but you know it is just a matter of time when some Christians will come upon where the Holy Spirit will will infill them and they will speak with boldness in defense and in attack of the enemy. So, this is a very clear manifestation of the evidence of speaking in tongues. Sorry, manifestation of the evidence of being filled with the Spirit. So as I conclude, my friends, my brothers, and my sisters, the experience and the opportunity of being filled with the Spirit is an experience and opportunity for every Christian. Is an experience and opportunity that we will need as the occasion or the situation requires. We may not need to have this fullness all the time, every day, but there will come some situations where only the fullness, only as we are fully controlled and fully influenced by God's Holy Spirit, then there will be the remedy. So may we, as we live this Christian life, as we seek to engage in the Christian ministry, desire to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Instead of becoming intoxicated, and being filled with wine and other things. Because symbolically and metaphorically speaking, there are so many other wines that are out there that Christians are filled with. Some are filled with the wine of gossiping. Some are filled with the wine of idleness. Some are filled with the wine of idle jesting and immoralities. But instead of being intoxicated by those things, let us allow our lives to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And when we be filled with the Holy Spirit as the occasion all the situation requires we are going to see mark move of god we are going to see mark transformation open and over the life of many persons the experience that you and i may need at certain time is just the fullness of that holy spirit as we minister to that man without Jesus Christ and maybe becoming so defensive. We don't seem to be able to get through to him because he's speaking all kind of folly. We just need to experience the fullness of God's Holy Spirit and cause him to be subdued. May we seek that fullness so that those situations, those people around us will be subdued. What the church needs today is not more programs and creativities. 
is not more methods or instruments. What the church needs today is to being filled with the Holy Spirit. And when we come to being filled with the Holy Spirit, then we are going to be, we are going to be seeing marked transformations, revival in our corners and our um, places and areas. But as I want to say as I close, the fullness of the Holy Spirit is for every Christian. Doesn't matter who you are and where you are at. It is for every Christian. It is for every denomination. As long as you embrace Jesus and him being crucified, then you need to experience being filled with the Holy Spirit. God bless you in Jesus' name. If you are without Jesus Christ in your life, then even before you can come to experience being filled with that Holy Spirit, then you need to experience the transformation by repenting of your sins, surrendering your life to him, and then you are on the way to experience God's presence and divine. Let us pray. Almighty God and our Father, we thank you, we glorify you, we follow you, we observe your will and your way. Thank you, God, for the experiences and the opportunities we have to being filled with your Holy Spirit. And God, all the different manifestations and evidences that will be accompanied with us being filled with the Holy Spirit. Fill your church again. Fill that brother, that sister again. Fill that group again, dear Father God. Fill our lives afresh. Pray for those who do not know you as Lord and Savior. They will come to the saving knowledge of your truth and your word. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. See you next week, God's willing.